Poison Ben by Game Guy Fan. Chapter 15 Going to the Horse's Mouth. Harry sat down with a weary sigh. Hermione sat directly across from him at the library table, while Ron and Ginny flanked him. Ginny was on his left, and Ron was on his right. From the determined look on Hermione's face, he got the distinct impression he was in for a rough time. Let the interrogation begin, he thought. Harry, asked Ginny, just where do you go when you disappear? Harry looked at her coldly. Ah, the opening cell, though. Yeah, mate. Ron said, looking from the charms essay he was working on. We need to know in case something happens. Harry closed his eyes in disgust. It really is none of your business, but if you must know, some place where I can think. He replied in an icy voice. I'm tired of the stares and whispers and getting bloody tired of people asking me about how I feel about Twist's articles. Then his shoulders slumped in defeat. Can I have at least some privacy of my own? But we're your friends, Harry. You can tell us anything. Hermione pleaded. Are you really? Harry asked in disbelief. Does that work both ways? Tell me, Marnie, when was the last time you and Ron snogged? Any plans on shagging soon? He leered at her. Hermione joked, turning bright scarlet at his words. Miss Pins shushed them from her desk. Jenny batted the back of Harry's head. Yes, we are your friends, and mind your mouth, Harry. Oh, blood! Ow! Ow! Bloody hell! Harry exclaimed, rubbing the back of his head. What was that for? Ginny grinned and shrugged. Something to remind you that we still are here for you. You can tell us anything. Harry huffed and returned to his homework, ignoring his friends. Yeah, right. Anything. Just like you lot tell me anything. Well, Hermione demanded, struggling for control of her blush. Harry looked up. When you see your way clear to answer all of my questions, I'll think about answering yours. Until then, it is simply none of your business. You are not my mother. You are not related to me in any way. I don't have to tell you anything unless I want to, and I don't. Friends respect each other's privacy, and we all know I have none, thanks to this bloody scar. His three companions sat in shocked silence. Hey, Harry! Hey, mate! Harry's attention was immediately drawn to the pair of identical red-headed twins that were bearing down on them. Yeah, Forge and Gred. Help us out here, mate. Yeah, who do you think is Oliver Twist? Harry groaned, ducking his head, but was silently thankful for the change of subject. Well, I personally think he's two people. One doing the research and one doing the writing. There is no way one person is doing it all. He said, while well, cackling silently. Right, now that Professor Flavick is helping him, there really are two people working on the articles. Well, sort of. The professor had been a fountain of information and research opportunities. Well, hasn't he come out of the closet? Ginny asked in an attempt to ease the tension. Well, he would be expelled, Fred said. Too right there, Fred, George agreed. Snape is already at the warpath. He wants the articles to cease. Now, he doesn't like his main source of entertainment under scrutiny. Not to mention our fearless at Master Forge. Hermione huffed. Well, whoever Oliver Twist is, he should be expelled. He is destroying the reputation of our school. Oh, Gred, the little know-it-all is paved. To right, mate, she doesn't like a little world shaking. Aye, Ron shouted as he stood. Leave her out of this. Miss Pins shushed them again, standing. If you can be quiet, then you'll have to leave. The librarian scolded. Harry shook his head at his friends. They just don't get it. How could such a smart witch have so little common sense? Didn't she see the things Twist pointed out for herself? With a heavy heart, he slammed his book closed and stood. Harry! Jenny called. Oi, where you going? Ron called out as he scrambled to follow Harry. It was after curfew when Professor Snape finally released him. Harry had just finished his latest session with Snape in what the Dumbledore chose to affectionately call remedial potions. Harry's head was pounding as he struggled to make it back to the dorm before he passed out. His staggering ashen form drew sympathetic looks from his dorm mates as Harry dropped limply onto his bed and closed the curtains. A flick of his wand and they were locked closed. Another flick and a silencing spell went up. As soon as the spells were up, Dobby popped in quietly with a headache potion. Harry sighed as he quickly drank it. Then the excitable little house elf snapped his fingers and a golem was laid out next to Harry. It looked just like him, pajamas and all. One illusion charm later and anyone looking in would only see a soundly sleeping Harry. Thanks, Dobby. You are the greatest, rasped Harry. Knock me up if anyone tries to wake me. The eccentric house elf nodded, blushing happily that his master had thanked him. 
Harry activated the goblin made Portkey hanging around his neck, bracing himself for the nauseating sensation of Portkey travel. When he next opened his eyes, he was flat on his arse in a special room set up for him by the goblins at Gringotts. Normally, it would have cost him a pretty hefty sum for his service, but somehow he had impressed Ragnarok, so all Harry was paying for was the setup cost of the room. Quite a coup, if Harry stopped and thought about it. Waiting for him were Lord Peter and another middle-aged man in a St. Mungo's healer's robe. Harry had yet to learn the finer points of traveling by port key, as most times he ended up in an inglorious heap, but he was working on it. However, using a port key in the throes of a backlash headache from a failed occlumency session with Snape wasn't a very good thing. He had been taking lessons on port key travel, among other things, with Lord Peter, and they'd found that with the amount of raw magic at Harry's fingertips, the young wizard still tended to overpower the spell and crash on arrival. Lord Harry... Lord Peter said, reaching to help the teen back onto his feet. As Harry stood, he lost the little bit of supper left in his stomach. Oclemency lesson? Lord Peter asked as he helped his charge over to the nearby lounge chair conjured up for tonight's meeting. Yes, sir, the shaking boy quietly acknowledged. The healer hissed as he stepped forward. Let me take a look. If this is what his lessons do to him, Severus Snape and Albus Dumbledore should be brought up on charges. They are not licensed to teach the mind arts, either of them. Harry, I want you to meet Healer at Waters. He comes highly recommended and has already taken a vow of secrecy on top of his healer's oaths. He won't say anything unless you release him. Lord Peter explained as the healer moved closer. He has been briefed on your situation. We had plans of doing a full diagnostic on you tonight for our records. Lord Peter informed softly as he took a nearby seat by the table. On the table were many folders, files, and writing implements. Do you need the pen reliever, young man? What am I saying? Of course you do. Healer Atwater said, fishing for a potion out of his bag. I took one before I came. Harry protested, rubbing his scar. I'm just glad that Lord Peter was able to arrange this meeting so fast. Someone had to believe me when I said the lessons weren't working. Unfortunately, Dumbledore doesn't. He just keeps saying, Harry, my boy, you need to learn this. Harry groaned, rambling on. His head hurt and his scar felt inflamed. The cool touch of the healer's hand brought mild relief and Harry leaned into it with a sigh of gratitude. And all I get from Snape is... Concentrate, try harder, clear your mind, you're useless, Potter, you're not even trying. And then he points his wand at my head and screams legilimens. So far, that's the extent of my lessons. Sometimes I'm so sick afterwards that I could barely make it to the loot of vomit. Hasn't anyone given you the books or any of the basic instructions at all? Healer Atwater's ass appalled. As he waved his hand, he made note of the information it gave off. The more Harry told him, the more shocked he looked. No, sir, not at Hogwarts. I did ask Lord Peter for some help in that area, he replied with a wan smile. Before we proceed, Lord Potter, I would like to do a more comprehensive diagnostic scan on you. Aren't you doing that now? All I'm doing at this time is checking your vitals and looking for a fever. Harry looked over at Lord Peter. He's on the road, and we need it for your records, the barrister explained. All right, you may, sir, Harry said with a slight nod but winced at the movement. Healer Atwaters waved his wand in an intricate pattern over the teen's body. When he finished, he sucked in a very deep breath. I just can't believe Poppy missed all this. She's one of the very best in Pediraxx. She couldn't be this blind. Maybe she didn't, Lord Peter commented. Over the next hour, Harry, Lord Peter, and Healer Atwaters went over Harry's complete medical history. The diligent healer documented everything. The scars, the fact that Harry had never been vaccinated in either world, the malnutrition, the basilisk poisoning, and Harry had even shown latent lingering signs of the Cruciatus curse. Oh, in Merlin's, Morgana's, and Sekhmet's blessed names, have you survived this long, Lord Potter? Healer Atwater's gasped. By rights, you should be dead or a vegetable in a ward at St. Mungo's. And has anyone looked at your curse scar since you received it? No, sir, not to my knowledge. Harry looked up at the healer through his bangs. Sir? Yes, Lord Potter. What's going to happen now? Now, Healer Atwater said, I'm going to give you proper occlumency lessons. Later, I will go over what I learned tonight and form a health plan regimen. I understand you suffer from nightmares. Yes, sir, and strange dreams as well. Harry hesitated, unsure if he should mention anything about the way his scar hurt when he was near Voldemort. What the hell, and for a penny and for a pound? 
besides the nightmares, I can tell whenever Voldemort is around because my scar hurts. Feels like my head is going to explode. When it's really bad, it breaks open and bleeds. As Potter's eyebrows rose to his hairline in shock. Well then, let's get started. Thus, Harry added another clandestine lesson. Thankfully, Dobby was very good at helping him keep track of his schedule. Lord Peter was gathering evidence against the so-called Leader of the Light for Harry's upcoming hearing. However, it would take more hardcore evidence than just what Lord Harry could provide, which is why Oliver Twist's articles were so important. By weaving the gossip mongering that the wizarding world so enjoys with true facts and issues, Oliver was sending a very strong message for change. Thankfully, despite his hectic schedule, Harry was able to get an article out that week. His friends were getting very persistent at dogging him. Harry wasn't sure if they really cared or were simply following Dumbledore's orders. Either way, it was getting beyond annoying. One thing Harry learned in all his years of using a library to hide from Dudders and his gang was that a library was the last place to share secrets in. You never knew who was listening around the corner or in the next aisle. Whispering always attracted more attention than actually speaking in a normal tone of voice would. He knew that the wards were a hot topic at the moment. He could hear discussions being bantered about as he studied in the library. From the horse's mouth. The biggest question around Hogwarts, surprisingly, is how safe the school truly is. Not who's going to win the House Cup, or how the upcoming Quidditch season is going to go. It seems my little rant about howlers was more than just that. According to the professors, Hogwarts will be closed during the holidays to upgrade the wards. Of course, that means everyone will have to leave school, including Potter. Speaking of Potter and the halls, Halloween is just past. Halloween, the night everyone likes to celebrate so lavishly, is also the night that made him one of the most famous figures in our world. And an orphan. I decided to find everything I could that was printed about what happened that terrible night in 1981. I found book after book on the topic, as well as newspaper articles. I was amazed that Flourish and Blots has a complete section set aside about Potter and the events of that night. What amazes me is very few agree on what really happened. Most tales of the events of that night are based on theories and suppositions. Not one of any of these sources put forth any actual evidence. No spells were ever recorded. There is no public medical record or cause of death on file for Lord or Lady Potter. No interviews with authorities who responded that night, nor with Potter himself, now that he's at an age to speak on the matter. All of which I find to be very interesting indeed. Many of them speculate that Potter's mother did some sort of old magic ritual before the Dark Lord killed her, before he turned his wand on the infant Potter himself. So my question is, why isn't there more emphasis on the mother and not the son? I was sure that there were many mothers who have died for their children in the first war. How many managed to save their children through their death? Why isn't Lily Potter heralded as a heroine? Naturally, Potter is revered as the boy who lived, but why isn't Lily Potter receiving more recognition for her part in this sorry tale? Let's face it, the only person that really knows what went on is Potter, who was only a toddler of 15 months and the Dark Lord himself. No one has ever asked Potter if he remembers that night. Lastly, as Halloween night has come and gone, I must wonder, where are all these so-called experts getting their facts? And the more important question is, why are they making money off a child's plight? Is Potter even aware of the copyright laws, entitlement, infringement laws? Of just how much these writers owe him for using his name without permission. I am given to understand that Harry Potter dolls were a big seller a few years back. Has he ever given his permission or product endorsement for any of the related items for sale? Is he receiving any royalties for these items? If not, why? He is most certainly entitled. Oliver Twist.